Ragnar Lothbrok lies dead in the Northumbrian dirt. Veins choked with Anglo-Saxon wrath and Viper's venom. Revenge was swift. His sons laid waste to the British Isles, splintering the land and slaughtering all who opposed them. The Viking horde swept west, an insatiable force that brought Alfred the Great to his knees. But some men can only be pushed so far. The year is now 878 AD. Whilst Norsemen settle land they once pillaged, Alfred of Wessex seeks to unite the Isles under one banner. But here stand a new wave of the ambitious and hungry, ready to stake their claim to Britannia. Kings will rise, one will rule. Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Thrones of Britannia. Last time around, Alfred defeated the rebels, and I quickly went over some of the features in this Total War game. Since then, however, we have made friendship agreements with the Kingdom of Mercia and the East Angles. The East Angles seeming rather strange as I, I named Guthrun my main enemy. But, as it said, God works in mysterious ways, and so does the Kingdom of Wessex. Furthermore, Alfred names his oldest son, Edward, as the main heir, and in so doing, stripping the title from the oldest male relative, Athelhelm, the son of his late brother. There is also a marriage. Alfred marries off his sister to the heir of Devon to secure their loyalty. Court intrigues. One of Alfred's governors tries to blackmail him. Alfred pays him off and everything seems fine for now. Mercia finds itself in a big heap of trouble as their advance on the splintered Welsh kingdoms has been thwarted as the Welsh kingdoms rallies to push the Mercians out. And with that introduction, I think it's safe to say that we are ready to jump into today's episode. So, today we are going to help ourselves and in the same time help the Mercians in so doing killing two birds with one stone. So right now we're at the corner of our province in Dorchester and right across we've got Oxnaford which was part of Mercia but is now being attacked and taken by, by Hemeliborg which is a Viking faction. So let's just quickly go over to the political map or the political landscape and we can see that Mercia at this point has lost three provinces or regions. I don't know if which one is region and which one is provinces. I guess the entire thing is the province and the other regions. So they've lost three regions anyways to two of the Welsh factions that have declared war on them. I do believe they're actually at war with three Welsh factions. So we can see the main one, the one that has um, gathered the uh, all the other Welsh factions to join in the fight against Mercia. And then we've got a secondary over here. And with them losing or having such problem on this side, the Hemeliborg faction decided, you know what, we're going to sneak in here and take Oxnaford and strike... Mercia in the back and we cannot have that we cannot have an expanding an expanding 
um, Viking faction so close to our border. Um, so we're we're gonna have to attack, um, and in so doing, helping Mercia, stopping these guys from rummaging straight through their lines here, um, attacking them, creating basically a two-front war for the Mercians. Um, the only problem for us the is the serve. fact that Hemleborg is actually got a defensive alliance with Bedeborg and Lederborg. It's kind of, I mean, almost to the point of... It's kind of a meme now when I take a look at it. Everyone's called Borg, and especially called Lederborg and Bedeborg. Lederborg and Bedeborg and Hemleborg and do do do. Um, so it's, it's a bit strange there. Anyways, they've got an... Uh, Defensive alliance with Lederborg and Bedeborg, so there might be a problem with the facing three Viking factions. However, or with that said, uh, there's actually a uh, strength rank. So Hemleborg is ranked 24. I believe that I yes, I'm ranked number one. There, these guys are ranked 24. Bedeborg is ranked 52, which must be one of the worst. And uh, Lederborg is ranked 40, so it's not that bad. I mean, Bedeborg, I don't think even they have an army. Um, so they should be quite, e quite easily for us to overrun them. Um, so yeah, with that said, let's go ahead and attack these guys. And hopefully, the, actually, the other ones um, join their ally in the defensive alliance. They honor the, the, the alliance and join in. So, uh, let's go ahead and declare war we'll on these guys. And we'll have a battle. And given that all my allies dislike um, the, uh, the enemies, means that most likely they all will join. Uh, we can see that... Huh, why are these deteriorating? Oh, they're deteriorating towards the enemy. Can take right, you. so everyone joined, and all of these guys joined as well. Especially Bedeborg, which, I mean, they have nothing to put up against us. So, um, I do uh, number them in the amount of, like, regiments or levy groups that I can put up against them. Because I have 21 against their 16, but as you can see... Quite a lot of mine are still being raised, and I Men do have an awful amount of spearmen. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to move the general, Athelwald, uh, close enough that he will reinforce Alfred. Get marching, men. And then we'll bring the up Alfred's army, which, as I asked you in the last episode, to name um, his... Uh, his army, rename it from the Swine's Array, so we have ne renamed it to Alfred's Chosen Men. But I like a lot of your different suggestions, so it might be that we will switch we will out the Resolute Wall for some of Jesus your other options. Uh, however, with that said, let's go ahead and strike these guys and take Oxnaford for ourselves. So, maybe I didn't go through that, but taking Oxnaford will actually complete my province. So this only has Oxnaford as region within its province. So we will complete this province, which is um, very good. With that said, let's go ahead and attack the Sons of Woden. Attack the foe! It puts us in favor, but uh, you never know. Looking at their army, they have a lot of spearmen as well. They have some swordmen... Um, quite a bit of cavalry. I think they might, they probably have more cavalry than us. Um, because mine units are not really rallied. Um, they do have these long axemen, which I've uh, played around a bit with. And I know that these guys are quite easily shot down by arrows. Um, so it should go pretty well, uh, hopefully. We do outnumber the enemy. Well, once my reinforcements come in, we will outnumber the enemy. But only by the slightest. If you see these guys are basically 2,000. And uh, 
with my reinforcement, maybe I'll be 2,100. So it'll still be quite a close fight. With that said, let's go ahead and join in battle with these enemies. If I go to night battle, I, yeah, I will not be reinforced, so that's no idea. So let's go ahead and fight this battle, shall we? And so the Battle of Oxnaford is underway. What I've gone ahead and done is I've brought my army back to wait for my reinforcements as we will not be strong enough to attack them uh, straight on in the beginning and it looks as though the enemy is actually gonna go ahead and give us the time to regroup our forces. A reinforcements have arrived! Which is very well for us. That he will go ahead and let us be reinforced. Otherwise, my plan was actually to try and hinder them with hiding my archers here and hiding my cavalry over here. Looking at the terrain, and given the, the enemy has an advantage in cavalry, I am thinking we'll try to come at them from this side, putting the village in our flank, hopefully negating them being able to flank me with their cavalry. And it's going to be easier to manage the battle Looks against like we'll get a, uh, a larger foe like this. So uh, it's probably going to take me a while to get into position. So what I'll do is we'll just march down the road and I'll get back to you guys battle once I'm ready to actually start the battle. Right, so I'm back. The men are kind of in position and a plan is starting to take form. So with the current situation the enemy is set up over here and uh, my plan is to have uh, the reinforcement army as part of it as we can see pikemen, the general and two archers to move in on the flank and in so doing uh, try to neutralize the enemy cavalry. On this side I've got my cavalry and some archers ready to neutralize this cavalry and attack the flank over here. This of course weakens my center but hopefully my center will hold long enough as the battle actually starts to uh, to uh, start kicking in um, that uh, the flanks will be able to secure and destroy the enemy on the flanks and then be able to turn and fall on the enemy from behind. I've put all the like, actually the worst units I have uh, with axemen and spearmen in the center, but they have the general close by to support. Um, and then I've put my more uh, experienced swordmen on the flank and once this flank is turned up they will fall on the enemy's back and that is the plan anyways. We're gonna start off by unsettling the enemy on this side, by bringing this portion of the army around so we can attack here, uh, shoot them down with the archers once they um, are whittled down enough, we will go ahead, they will probably charge, and then they will run into the spears, and once that is done, he can start turning on the flank, um, and as that happens, Making ready. the main Enemy force can beware. move forward. So right now we can see it's uh, along here, kind of-ish. So we'll march Don't up, hold back. and Thanks. we'll put the f men on the Hell flanks yeah. over there. And we'll have these guys the move forward. The Quick march, and we can see the enemy is reorganizing now. Set for war. We'll put the, we'll tell the, uh, what's it called, the spearmen to move first, the archers to come afterwards. I'm not entirely sure why they can't move there, and then the general there as well. We don't want the enemy to attack before we are ready, so I'm a bit worried here. Oh, we will be within archer range at this point. 
which General. means that this part Set of the army war. will all yes. go into shield attack. wall and uh, we need to start acting on the flanks. I don't know, they put the, all the cavalry in the center, hiding them. We need to start getting at the enemy now. On both sides. Spearman forward. General forward with your spearmen. The two archer units come with. So right now the general is under attack. Oh, there they come. Cavalry turns up out of the forest. An absolute disastrous plan for the enemy as their cavalry is struck. And I'm not entirely sure what they're doing here. But a similar thing is happening over here. Where the cavalry is outnumbered and will fall to us. See, they flee before our might. The archers, however, will go into skirmish mode as it wasn't really the plan there. Right, spearmen. We didn't lose a single man and my archers are killing the enemy. The main line will advance. Oh, get out of spear wall and the main line will advance oh the cavalry is now engaged with spearmen that's not good who's running my archers got defeated by the enemy archers which was unfortunate but uh, not a major disaster put back to normal arrows my flank is moving in, my main force is moving in. What, long axemen? Let's not go out of line. What do we have here? Spearmen? Spearmen versus Spearmen. You will just move forwards to hold the flag. There's actually a rock there in the way. General needs to come in. And yeah, it's time for the main line, it looks like. And this part of the line as well. Archers harass that guy. What's this? Oh, it's Spearman. Cavalry will come in through the back. Move in a bit further here. Strike. Strike now. Hit them hard. There's a lot of units actually coming in here. At the back, which we do not like. Cavalry needs to come around, save this. You need to move through here. And archers, I guess you will just station you guys over here. Okay, so I was able to turn there in time, which is good. I was able to turn this unit up just in time to save them from being attacked in the flank. Through here, we're attacking there, but I don't think that fight is going to good. Hopefully we'll break through here pretty soon. We're doing pretty well over here. We need the cavalry, however, to come in around and get the enemy. And I really want to break... Yes. No, I really want to break some... There, yes. This is what we want. So I'm able to fall on the enemy's back. The men have been routed. They are leaving the field. Who is routing? Annihilate them. Fall on my enemy. Archers, they fire, can fire through here. Yes, these are falling. Get through here. 
I do have two units of my spearmen and so being broken. A smaller cavalry unit needs to come back. Archers, we need your aid over here. The general is doing fine. And he's now attacking the enemy general. And the enemy general is outnumbered, locally outnumbered there. The enemy general is dead. And now he dies, sending the enemy into disarray. While I've got troops rallying, the enemy was broken over there. We need to turn around. Unfortunately, there's not that many close-ups here. Because, well, uh, it, there's so much to focus on here. Okay, we've won over here, so let's take stock in what's left. So we have one guy over there, and we have one over there, and we have some fighting over here. Where we uh, need to strike the enemy in the back. And there we have victory! And I don't think I need to charge... Everyone down because it's in a town, which means they'll die anyways. But we'll probably make a lot more XP for my men if I tell them to charge down. So, unfortunately, I again I have to say that I didn't get that many close ups of the battle because there was so much to do, it was a close call battle. Or at least, um, if I wasn't paying attention to what was going on during the battle, it could have easily uh, turned the other way, since the enemy had pretty good units. I probably still did a few mistakes where I could have matched the troops who were meeting each other on the field. But um, it's gone fine, and this is this was really the only army that the enemy could put up against me really if we uh, if we saw on the strength strength ratio that their allies which they brought in had nothing and um, yeah I know you're tired you might be tired but it would be nice if you could shoot shoot down some of these guys the long axeman. Very nice. Anyways, I guess we'll take a look at statistics and uh, we'll see how the battle went. And here we have the battle results of the Battle of Oxnaford. 8, 880 or 880 AD. Um, I deployed 2,200 men and the enemy deployed around 2,000 men. They lost 1,400, um, and I lost 700, so half of what the enemy lost. Uh, looking at their highest killers, we can see that um, their highest killers were these swordmen right here. They managed to kill 185 of my men. So uh, when I watch the replay, I need to see what what these guys were, what they were doing, and so forth, and analyze what I can improve there. And then we can see that the next up is actually the archers. Uh, poorest um, result of these men were the enemy cavalry, which combined only killed seven of my men, which is incredibly poor result. This one actually survived, or this one has rather a lot of men left, as they and they managed to kill 123. So I need to check out what their archers did and what this guy did. I can also see that one of their axemen did really well. So 
if the, these guys are comparable, I guess, to the Naginatas, they have a low um, defensive value, but a really high attack and charge value. So I think um, having those guys, uh, if I am recruit, uh, can recruit something similar, those are definitely troops that you need to put on the flank and throw in like in the back of an enemy unit, completely trashing them with those large axes. On my side, we can see that the highest uh, kills was actually achieved by the general. Then we have my sword infantry doing really well. Uh, we have a few units that did not do well. It's some of the spearmen did not do well. Uh, cavalry did pretty well. Archers not so much lost the lower men. So there's certainly uh, room for improvements here. Um, but it's still a victory. And 1400 men remain. And I will be able to replenish my troops while this army with its king and all is gone. So let's go on to the campaign map. And uh, yes, there we have it. They completely destroyed the decisive battle at Oxnaford. And uh, I will occupy. It will give me 11% replenishment, which is great. Yes. Killed in battle. Anulf, king of Helmiborg, uh, commanding the uh, sons of Woden. Opponent Alfred, Alfred with Alfred's chosen men, Oxnaford. Uh, location Wessex, so yeah, it's back in our fold. Um, sometimes you g you are given the option the to, to uh, give back territory Fetch to your allies, fight. but I guess that's not going to happen this time around. Uh, I am re replenishing a lot of these units rather quickly, 19 men per turn. We probably might have gained some skill, we got oh, skill for Athelwald. So, the supporting general got um, some points. Now, I champion is pretty good, but I think that bard is also pretty good because it helps with replenishment. Right now, he doesn't need that much replenishment though, so we'll go for champion. Um, so, looking at the situation right now, we definitely want to hamper the uh, capabilities of Bedenford and well, Bedenborg um, and their ability to fight back. They have two territories, one of which is undefended right here um, in Buckingham. So we'll tell him to uh, charge on and take that while Alfred recuperates here with his men. We have the possibility of possibly getting another spearman uh, into this army, which could be good. I do have well enough food and uh, the Bugle border war war has reached our border. The entire wealth of the kingdom should be committed to the military. Currently the public order is plus four. Fjord capaci uh, capacity by 75%. Uh, campaign removed for all the enemies. Construction cost for uh, garrison buildings. Uh, I just want to recruit one Spearman, because now I'm able to open up the research tab. So, research is only enabled once you recruit or accomplish certain stuff. Um, so, this one example is attack another army 10 times, and then there's sieges and military prestige and stuff like that. But now we've been able up to unlock this, and uh, we'll get some better spearmen as we go through here. Not all things are good though as you improve, so upkeep costs will, in will um, increase and food upkeep will also increase, So, but the units will get a lot better. So uh, really good first battle here and uh, I think we'll go ahead and do one more turn just so I can take Buckingham and see if the enemy is actually able to raise a force against us. So we'll see kind of what's coming next episode. Right, so before we actually get to our end turn, we've got a little Viking kingdom over a little island right here that wants a declaration of friendship. However, these guys are at war 
with the East Angles, which I'm actually trying to befriend. So, no thank you to Sigtrug, you stupid... Oh, he's xenophobic as well. This he, this person dislikes foreigners intensely in regard to foreigners. And... Why, but he came here to England. What the hell? And he's xenophobic. Why, you, sh you should have stayed in Norway, you bastard. Well, I tried. Well, I tried. I grow ever stronger. Right, and then we have the end turn. Train warriors. The horn of war has been blown, and we must prepare a man for combat. How shall we strengthen our ranks? So we gain extra men for the pool. And since, I mean, I already have... Spearman kind of is the backbone. But maybe we should go for Axemen, Missile Infantry. Cavalry is good. I don't know what to pick. But I think we're going to pick Axemen, actually. I do have enough Spearmen, I think. You know what? It's always good to have a backbone of Spearmen. So we'll have a lot of Spearmen. Wingluff, the guy that uh, blackmailed the king, is a glutton. Sinful. So we know where all the money he got, ill-gotten gains he got from the king, those 1500 coins, goes directly into feeding his... just his uh, more pies here, faster wench. I'm half starved. Uh, yeah. Just keeps eating. This guy got insane. Who is this? I hope it's not one of my... Governors. I'm pretty sure it is one of my governors that has gone insane. Losing command, losing governance, losing sea, losing influence, and public order. We need to get rid of this guy. But with that said, I'm just going to go over here. Agreed. Take Buckingham. Occupy the province. And uh, we can see that the Benton Forges have not put up any more armies. However, By no means. the Hemeliborg has raised another army, which I imagine this is the son of the king I just killed. And for now, we see that Lederborg is sending no men to the aid of their fellow Borgs. We will, we will smite the Borgs. However, it looks like their uh, strength rank has increased by three points. I believe they was rank 40 last turn. These guys, however, dropped. I can't remember exactly what they were, but now they're down to 49. Bedenborg has still 52. I probably so I think we can assume that 52 is probably the worst rank you can have. If I quickly go through here, I can't find anyone with the worst rank. No, 53 is actually the worst one. And those guys are just beyond Bedenborg. So these guys... They don't even have an army, look at that. There's not even a sliver of red. So, surprisingly, it's going to go surprisingly well here. However, with that said, we can see that our allies... Well, they're not really our allies, but it's an... Uh, they're the same kind of kingdom as us. And they're losing heavily to the Welsh. So we need to step in and help them once we've dealt with these guys. But with that said... We're going to go ahead and end the episode right here. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. And hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.